Hi, I'm the host of the STO Smokers Lounge. I'm here to tell you about Anchor, the perfect app that you can use right now to start your own podcast network. You can broadcast right now. All you got to do is download the app, whether you have a phone, iPad, or even a laptop or desktop. You can right now download Anchor or go to Anchor FM right now. And start recording and have your stuff broadcasted over multiple platforms, such as Spotify. So go to Anchor today and start your podcast career like I have. Because trust me, I love me some Anchor. Black Wall Street is now online, baby. That's right. Visit the GW District. Shop the very best in men's and women's apparel and accessories, home decor, office supplies, books, pantry items, and so much more. The GW District is a retail marketplace of black-owned products and media. We're both veteran and black-owned, and we're bringing you the best online shopping experience with products made by small businesses. Come and experience the GW District difference today at Shop gwdistrict.com that's shop gwdistrict.com the gw district a retail marketplace of black owned products and media that's right that's right right. hey how are you i just love it when people just come through with like good positive energy (laughs) a smile on their face you know say it just it just made it just brings my spirit up how you doing tonight I'm doing great. <laughs> no doubt. Word. So how have your week been in your day? Um, this week's been a little uneventful, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> to, to be completely honest. <laughs> uh, my week before was crazy busy because I was in New York and everything. But um, this week I had a job scheduled on Tuesday that is the job called him in, and, um, <laughs> and um, obviously I can't go into details. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> and then I did have a photo shoot Tuesday night, so that went well. Um, and then I've been just trying to set up some um, stuff for Miami because I'm going to Exodus. And so I've been trying to set up a bunch of content shoots and stuff. Yes. So it's like when, so when you like look for your content shoots, like do you hit do you hit them up or do they hit you up? Both. Both. Um, I mean like I go on Twitter and I I like look at people that people I know follow, you know, and find people in my area that I mm-hmm. maybe haven't worked with before and I might hit them up. And then people do the same thing. Yeah, most that goes both ways. Because I, yeah, because I was be, I was looking at your pictures and I was like, it's like the vibe I get. And I said you might laugh at it. You're like the sexy rich man's wife that's fucking the pool boy. <laughs> Thanks, <I guess. laughs> it's kind of like you know what I'm saying. It's. I mean, it's not a, it, I don't mean a negative about anything like that. Like you would cheat on your husband or boyfriend, and been like that. Yeah, no, no. okay. it, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a a shy sex appeal. You know what I'm saying? It's, I definitely it, would say that 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 is pretty um, spot on. <laughs> I uh, I am actually very for people like that in like a rig. One, I am shy, but like sexually, I'm not. <laughs> so oh, yeah. it's like two I, different I sides like of my personality. Cry, but when that camera turn on, you are you you own it. Cause I like even from looking at some of your your pictures and your trailers, Probably. I'm like, Shh, she gets down. She gets down. I like you. I would have loved to work with you when I was in the yeah. business. So I like a female that they bring that high energy and that, yeah. and that intenseness and enjoyment to it. I, you know? Yeah. That's- Usually, it's usually the reaction I get is that like I'm a lot of fun, and people are usually surprised because I do come off as a little bit quieter and shyer and more reserved at first. <laughs> so then, when the camera starts mm-hmm. rolling, I'm the total opposite. People are pleasantly surprised. See, yeah, see, 
that's what they, that's what we like. <laughs> so look, let me do these particulars so we can get this wonderful interview on the road, okay? Yeah, of course. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge here on Anchor, the perfect app for anyone trying to start their own podcast career. All you got to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and start a profile today. I'm your host, Captain Office of a Champ. You know what it is. Find all my links in one spot with one link with allmylinks.com backslash porn rap star. Also, I'd like to tell you about three wonderful sponsors that we have. The first one being the Facebook of the LS community. I'm talking about LSworld.com. Next up is Eroticism Magazine, the newest, hottest magazine that's tearing up the web. So go to eroticismmagazine.com and get yourself a subscription. Get it paperback or get it mailed to you. Get it mailed to you via paperback or get it digital. And last but not least, put black on excitebunny.com for your consumers. A new site for you to go to to consume some of the hottest triple X content on the web. And for you content creators, 90% profit. They also offer health care as well as many other services. So either way, whether you're a consumer or a content creator, please. Get a profile to excitebunny.com. With a proud member of the GW District Black Podcasting Network, plus why you dare get the opportunity to buy products from over 500 black-owned retailers and shop. I'm talking about shopgwdistrict.com. Check me out on Skyhawk After Dark. Damn it, hold on. Skyhawk After Dark TV.com, as well as the BGP app on SGP Radio. So with that being said, I'm about to shut up and let this sexy, shy, but yet freak Introduce herself. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Natalia Crimson. <laughs> so, so I know you decided to, to be going to. I mean, that, 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 that's good enough, right there, Natalia Crimson. And okay. um, how long have you? <laughs> so, how long have you been in the business, baby? How long you been filming? Um, not that long. I've been. Like, I don't know, about eight or nine months. Started off. Mm. So when I first started, I was only doing content. I was just trying to make some money, take care of my kid. But um, but I've slowly mm. started getting into the whole content thing. So. So no doubt. So what brought you into doing adult film? Um, honestly, I needed something that I could like make. A decent amount of money at, but like not traditional hours because I homeschool my kid and he's got medical mm. problems and a lot of doctor's appointments. So I had to find something that like I could work around our crazy schedule. Yeah. So it's sort of yeah, what I landed on. And plus, I've always been a freak and I've always loved sex. So it seemed like a fun <laughs> way to <laughs> make some money. <laughs> yeah, God, I've seen Reed, you said, uh, what draw me to when you said, uh, nep- but never shy. No, it was a shy IRL. But never shy. Stay married too young, living out the fantasy. <laughs> yeah, I I got married really young. So I was um twenty when I got married, but I was with him since I was eighteen. So I mm-hmm. didn't really have my like crazy, you know, twenty sexual experience. So I'm doing it a little later in life. Oh no, doubt. now that I'm not married. <laughs> no, it, it like put it this way, it's a lot of women that's coming in later on in life into the business later on in life mm-hmm. in their mid thirties to, to their forties. Right. You know. And it seemed like they have a better go at it than they have the young girl to and a little bit more longevity. Yeah, well I also think we take it a little more seriously too and look at it more like a business than maybe the yeah. younger people do. Yeah, most definitely. So let's go back. When, how did you go into looking into getting, because you said you started off with paid shoots. Yeah. So, I, I, um, so how, did, how did you go about finding your paid shoots, putting your stuff out there, getting <laughs> fillers for different companies or what have you, or producers? Honestly, I sort of lucked out. Um, I put, I heard about sexyjobs.com, so I put a profile up on there, and I just got hits right away. Like, <laughs> And I know not everybody has that experience, and, like, some people have really bad luck on sexy jobs, but I actually had some good luck. So, um, I found a few, you know, obviously I had the few that were, like, you know, scam artist crap, you know, mm-hmm. crap. Yeah, yeah. I had enough of the good, you know, the good jobs coming through that, 
it got me started. And then, and then when you do well at a job, yeah, they put you in touch with other people. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's sort of a snowball effect. Oh yeah, most of it. Now let's unpack your first shoot. So when you got hit up for your first, uh, was this a company or a, or a producer? Um, the very first shoot that I did was very, very low key. It was more of like a personal collection type of thing. Like we signed all the paperwork and everything, but I don't think it's ever going to see the light of day type of thing, (laughs) which actually was good because it was, I was more comfortable because I was like, okay, so if I totally screw up, it's just his collection, (laughs) you know, like whatever. And then my second... Go ahead. The actual company. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, um, so you had a basically a private shoot, and then you did a actual company after that. So let's right. let's go to first the private shoot, what have you? Um, when you hooked up with him, because this is your first time being on camera, even though yes, you are natural freak, it's still on camera. So, right. what some of the things that he did to make you relax? What would the set look like? You know, paint the picture we have for that shoot. Uh, it was pretty relaxed. We talked a lot <laughs> before the shoot ever happened because he knew that I was not a hundred percent. So like we talked a lot and got to be friends before I ever met him, so that like I felt more comfortable with him and it was more natural. So it it yeah. So by the time I met him, I felt like I already knew him. Like we'd been talking for a month. So <laughs> I slow I like okay. eased myself in at first, you know. <laughs> I wanted to make sure he wasn't a crazy person, and so I talked to him for a while before I agreed to actually meet him. But um, but yeah, so it went. It was he got like a nice hotel suite, you know, and we filmed there. Um, and you know, it was fine. It was he was he was a nice guy, and um, I still keep in touch with him. So. No, no doubt, no doubt. So, what were he doing POV style? Did he have it like on a tripod? POV, he was POV, POV, okay. POV, yeah. Yeah, POV is a great icebreaker, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, because even when during my career, when I had girls come work with me, like we used to do a three day stretcher shoot. And that first day, we mostly did POV. And it was like to be an icebreaker because when we get in front of the big camera, we already developed chemistry so those things can look good. So, exactly. Um, yeah. So now that you have. A lot kinda, of times with content creators, uh, if you, if, as long as it's not like. If you're, you don't always do that, but mm-hmm. some place to work with someone and have more than one day. We usually do that. You do like a little bit of, of like POV type stuff and like not anything too serious, but like just to get your chemistry going the first day and then the more mm-hmm. like intense shooting the next day. Yeah, yeah. Because because also because that way I used to like doing anyway was work with somebody over multiple days because each day the scenes get better. And the chemistry gets better, you of know, course. and and you get more, well, you yeah. really get more out of it, you know. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, the next of course, because the with, more natural the chemistry right. is, the more natural the chemistry is, the better the shoot's going to be. Obviously, <laughs> you know, if it looks fake and oh, poor, yeah. it's not going to be good. So. <laughs> it's going to suck. Hey, they, yeah, man, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> you didn't look like you like his dad. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> so, so now we move on to the page shoot, your first page shoot uh, yeah. with a, a company. Um, with that, tell me how it was walking around on set because it was a little bit different because I'm pretty sure they had oh, a totally different. Like, set. Yeah, they had so, like you know, all the big, all the lights and cameras set up. You know, it's a totally different feel. Um, and I was working with a couple, so it was like a, it was a. It was a threesome, so it was me and then a guy and a girl. So, and um, <laughs> experience with girls, so I was a little out of my element to begin with. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah. So it was it was a lot walking in, but luckily the couple that I was working with was like, you know, coming to my nerves, and like we talked a little bit before we got good. So it actually was a really good. It was actually a really good scene. I met a lot of people through them too, so they were very nice to me, and they um, ended up, you know, introducing me to other people that shoot content and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, because but people don't realize that there's different pressure between a content shoot and a page shoot. Um, because with the page oh, shoot, yeah. 
you really want to perform at your extreme best so that hey, you're back. one of the next yeah. person can yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like speak to your thought process walking to a page shoot versus you when you do a content. Well, I mean, obviously I want to do my best regardless, <laughs> but when you're doing yeah. a page shoot, you know, if you want to make a good impression so that you get more page shoots, you know, be it with that company or with a company that they talk to you. So obviously, yeah. like that's that's how I pay my bills. So <laughs> that's like a little bit more important than a content shoot in that sense. So you go into it with a little bit different of a mindset. And so, and also I think it's a little bit more business-like <laughs> at a, like at a, like a paid shoot. And it's more about let's get, let's get the scene right. Like, let's get the angles right. Let's get, and less about really enjoying the sex part. Mm-hmm. Kind of get a little more into it and like have more fun <laughs> too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and but you have more time because yeah, usually the course. page shoot, they're on a, a, a time schedule where they might be in a studio right. or they have other shoots coming behind that. You know, exactly. But, usually they have other shoots coming right behind you, and so you've got a certain amount of time to get everything you need done. So, so it's definitely more business, like business, like like let's get this done, let's get let's get the scene <laughs> in and move on to the next thing. So with, with the with the page shoots. Um, a lot of people like they think what we do, especially for that camera, is kind of easy. Anybody can do it. Um, speak to yeah. Yeah. The, the things that you have to think about when you're being in front of that camera versus if there's no camera. Oh well, it's totally different. Other than there's a camera. Yeah. <laughs> Other because than there's a camera. The obvious, but like also you have to worry about like the angles that you're you're the camera is hitting you at and like what they're seeing and like if your arm's in the way <laughs> or if like a certain you know sex move doesn't look good on camera but maybe feels good you're not going to do it you know <laughs> like you're going to do what looks good on camera and everybody always laughs at me like I'm always horny as heck after a shoot because you don't <laughs> like it's more about getting the feeling like getting what looks good than actually like enjoying it so it's like I want real sex afterward <laughs> yeah. but because, it, it's because not, sometimes it's, the girl don't get the orgasm. No, yeah. Sometimes. You know, the guy has to has to come for the camera, but the girl doesn't always. Sometimes it's because it's stop and go a lot on camera. Like, you know, like, okay, love, you know, we did a couple of minutes. Okay, move. Let's get this position. You know, move your arm this way. You know, do this. And so it's harder for the girl to get into a rhythm and really, like, enjoy it to the... Yeah, yeah, so true. So but, true. um... Yeah, so, but, and also it's a psychological thing. When the camera's on, you're in your head a little bit, too, about, like, what do I look like? What, you know, what's the person watching, seeing? And it's a little harder to get in the moment. It's not as easy as people think it is. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can tell you that from 15 years being in front of the camera, my damn self. <laughs> as a man. And we have it a little bit harder than y'all, because we have to keep yeah. it hard. Well, right. Yeah, we could get, we could take it. <laughs> we could ask. Oh yeah, you pretty good at that. I mean, shit, because because we cannot hit it. Nobody's happy. Literally, God damn it. Y'all can work through y'all yeah, to a exactly. certain extent. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sitting here on your exactly. time. No, it's, time it's hard for us. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I'm seeing this massive orgy that you got up here and everything, and um. Shoot. That, I was mean, first, I mean, um, that was my first shoot. Ha- that was my first shoot house that I went to. So oh that so was t- that was so- that was the first time I got invited to a shoot house. I didn't know what the hell I was getting myself into, but it was fun. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So, 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 how did they? How did they? How did they come up with the origin? Was they just gonna say, "Yo, y'all just go, y'all go, and we just film," or, or was well, it organized? It was a shoot house, so it was a bunch of content creators at an Airbnb, you know, doing content the whole weekend. So we just, everybody that was there got in and did the orgy, so. Yeah, I, I can see that, because it's just like everywhere is dicks and mouth on it. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. everybody's so dick and you missing out this piece. So do you do content houses on the regular? Um, I've only done two, but like, I've only been in the business for a few months, so yeah, like. True. But um, I'm only done two so far. I am um, going in with some people to rent a house 
in Miami um, during X Biz, so that's going to be my third. So, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. so um, you uh, are a swinger, am I correct? You know what I'm saying? In the lifestyle. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> cool, no doubt. So how much do you appropriate that into your brand of porn? Um, well, I'm not really like with anybody right now, so it's a little harder to appropriate that into my porn because I don't have a significant other for the second. Yeah. So yeah, you say, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, I, I, but I mean I, like if you went to the swing clubs and stuff like that, because I know you 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 in Florida and you in yeah. Tampa. Come on. <laughs> Tampa <laughs> gets wide open. Tampa gets wide open. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah, no, I came to the swinger club with my one of my friend, one of my porn friends. So yeah. So, mm. but uh, it, it's um, it's just a lot of open-minded people having fun, you know. <laughs> so yeah. the only thing you have to be more careful about the swinger clubs is that you know, in porn, everybody's testing. <laughs> the swinger clubs, yeah. you don't know, so. <laughs> You got to use more protection yeah. and be a little bit more careful at the swinger club. But. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Now, I know that sometimes motherfuckers have film up in there or they do the glory hole shit and, um, and film up in there. Cause I know they that's really big what they do in D.C. So, so oh, yeah, most definitely. So, mm-hmm. um, you started now to start doing your content or what have you and filming your own content. Um, yeah. How did you go about finding your male talent and what did you look uh, for in your male talent to work with? Um, I try and find male talent that I just vibe with, like, on a personal level, because whenever you're comfortable with someone on a friendship level, so I always try and talk mm-hmm. to people first. Like, I always try and, like, reach out to them and, like, have a few conversations to, like, get a feeling of how they are as a person before I, like, actually make plans. Because if I'm not comfortable with someone as a person, I'm not going to be comfortable with them sexually, and it's not going to be any good. So, yeah, so yeah I, always, I always try and, like, reach out and get to know someone a little bit first. I also do a lot of stuff with people that, like, my friends refer me to. So, like, I know that they're good people because, you know... They've already worked with someone I know, so. So, now, to keep up with the demand of this business, how often do you film? Well, I mean, I wish I could film more often, but I'm a single mom, so. <laughs> I have to, like, you know, I can't do it all the time. So, yeah, I, yeah, I actually have to turn down a lot of shoots just because I don't have a babysitter or mm-hmm. I've shot too much and I've been away from him too much, you know, and I don't mm-hmm. want to, so. But um, I'm trying to keep up. Um, I would say you need to shoot at least, you know, at least once a week, you know, get something good, if not more often than that, preferably. But, um, you know, so that you can put something out. I have quite a few things that are being edited right now. So hopefully I'll start putting stuff out on a more regular basis soon. So. Yeah, because the hardest part of this is balancing the business and the personal. Yeah, you know, for and and having the time to do all that because even with like, even with me, like now that I'm doing like the podcast, and I still have to promote and make do edits to videos that I didn't shot for years and years and years, and it's kind of it's time consuming. Plus, also yeah. being able to spend time with family, and everything. How do you balance that? Um, I'm still learning <laughs> to balance that. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can at it. Um. Like I said, I unfortunately I do have to turn some stuff down just because I have to make sure my son comes first. But um, I you know I some people don't really understand. A lot of people in the business are single and you know can go do something on a whim <laughs> and like doesn't don't, don't have to have any planning. You know, whereas like people will call me like you know ten minutes before something is going to go down and I'm like I can't do that. I don't have a babysitter. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, cause being a single mom is yeah, yeah, it's it's tough to to chase a career. You know, what I'm especially you don't have as much help for the most part. So, yeah, yeah, so you know. but but I'm trying my hardest. I've I've been trying to like you know find more reliable babysitters and like you know get backup babysitters and stuff. And yeah. I also try and do like shoot houses or like trips to like a certain area and like mm-hmm. put a lot a lot of stuff in a short period of time. <laughs> To where, like, I get a bunch of content in, like, three or four days. 
and I find a babysitter for those three or four days, and then I have a week, you know, and then I take a week off to be with my son afterwards, you know. So I try to do that because it's more cost effective for me than like one one shot with one person. <laughs> I yeah. With days and going to a shoot house where I get a bunch of shoots. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause, it, Cause even when I like even my days, like I said, I bring a girl here for three days. She's leaving with twelve to to fifteen scenes. We 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 gonna make sure of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do it, you know. Yeah. You so know, I try because... to I try to get like more more in short periods of time instead of like instead of a lot of little things. It's more cost effective and easier for me to plan. So. Yeah, it most definitely. So now, <clears throat> when you're not able to do the page shoots, able to do the content, what other things did you do within the sex work trade to help supplement that? I haven't really. I've really just done page shoots and content. I do other like <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I do other um, like little like gig work type stuff when I really need extra money. So mm -hmm. yeah. So I, that's really all I've done is the content and the and, and the page. Like shoot. Day off of no custom videos, shoot. Yeah, I need to get into all of that. Like I said, I just started posting I mean, on Twitter like a month ago. <laughs> I literally just I just started posting on my Twitter like a month ago. Like you know, regular regularly. Like I had maybe retweeted a couple things before that, but like I had it <laughs> like so I just started doing that and I have my many vids. But I don't even have an OnlyFans yet, so like I got, I gotta get on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it, the thing of it is, is and and I think you you understand this. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. And it, one for this to be your rookie year, you're doing very good because you yeah. walked into the game with paid shoots. Not a lot of girls can say that. Let's keep it one hundred. Yeah. So yeah. no, I've been lucky. Like I've been lucky in that sense. So definitely. Yeah. So, so, and two, like, a, and, and like I said, it, it takes time because a lot of girls think they're going to come in and make money like that. And it's, that's not the case. It takes. Not with the content. No, definitely not. That's why I do both. <laughs> yeah. Because, but, and, and two, the other reason is the more, the page shoots also is to help you get exposure on a bigger market. Right. And yeah. I, a lot of people I have done content with, I met at the page shoots. So. Yeah. So, so, so it's it, all, it all is connected, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because think about it. what better way to what better way to verify the motherfucker you just shot with, <laughs> you got paid to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's good. I could definitely. I have nothing to worry about with him. I know we're gonna great scene. Let's do it. Yeah, call me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so you definitely find more content through the page shoots too. So it works on you know both levels. But um, I like. I've been lucky to find as many people. Everybody, I did a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Hello? So. Yeah. Yeah. Now you, but you were breaking up okay. a little bit. We, you, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't gonna want to act stupid right now. But you were breaking yeah. up a little bit. But go ahead, can people just finish what you're saying? Yeah, um, yeah, but I don't know what I was saying at this point. I'm like, man, come on, Anchor. Stop. 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 <laughs> so, but anyway, with that being said, we come to the part of the show where the pussies go dry and the dicks go limp. Let's talk about the business. Now, we talked about you balancing everything. Now, the other part of balancing is making money with the scene and which includes the editing which which includes the promoting and the whole nine mm -hmm. um also paying attention to the the money and the traffic and the whole nine speak to one of the misconceptions that people think that when you are it's easy money and the hard work behind the scenes of it yeah, well, people think that you just throw the content up there and you make money. <laughs> That's not the case. You have to build 
a brand and a following and get people to, you know, like your work and, you know, follow you in order for them to buy it, which means you've got to do all the editing, you've got to do all of the promoting, you've got to make sure you have a constant flow of content because they're not going to keep buying the same crap over and over again. So (laughs) it's a lot of work. No, it's definitely a lot more work than people realize. And also it doesn't pay very much at the beginning until people know you. So. Yeah, because it was a, a conversation they had on a podcast that I listened to. And it was saying that it, in podcasting, for example, there's there's ways of making money, different ways of making money. You have to find your way of doing it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people walk in looking for a deal, just like you have a lot of people walk in and look to find an agent or a manager or what have you and everything. Um, and people don't realize that sometimes it takes time to get that sale, that first sale, to get that first check. Do you think when people get it fast that it spoils them to, and which in turn makes them fizz out fast because now they don't understand the work behind it? <clears throat> yeah, I, mean, I, think some, I think sometimes that's the case. I mean, obviously there's going to be exceptions to that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes if someone – right off the bat, you know, is getting it without putting all the work in. They're just going to expect it to always be there, and they're not going to know how to put the work in when they need to. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. So, um, because I know you be at home a lot with with your, with your child and whole nine. How much time you put into your marketing and your promotion? Um, like I said, I've really only just started doing the whole, like, really pushing my brand out there in the last, like, month or so. So I'm still trying to figure out the balance of like how much I need to do that. Um, but but I have a bunch of like I just shot a bunch of content in New York and also a little bit here before I went to New York. And then I I have a few um, swinger couples that I've been talking to about being a third and like some content with them. So here and then I have X biz coming up. Yeah. So I have to put on my many vids pretty soon you know i obviously got to edit it all and do all that crap i should have a lot to like be able to put something out you know every few days or once a week or whatever driving some traffic i don't have that much up so it's hard to like really drive traffic to it because i only have a few but yeah so now once i get um, content going (laughs) then i'll start doing more of the promoting and everything but i've been trying i mean i try to get on twitter every day and i try to you know i try to shoot, you know, i mean you take it to new york to try and find new people to shoot with so so tell us about the trip to new york um you know so who did you work with who did you connect with you know period because oh, like i said i mean you traveling you get what i'm saying that that speaks volumes yeah. within itself yeah um well <laughs> that trip sort of got a little screwed up because a bunch of my jobs got canceled <laughs> at the last second. I was supposed to have a bunch of paid shoots in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, I was supposed to have the Thursday I got there, I was supposed to have a $500 paid shoot. And then the Friday I was there, I was supposed to have a $700 paid shoot and then shoot content the rest of the day with that person. And the $700 paid shoot is someone I have shot with three or four times already. So, and mm-hmm. they've always paid me, they've always done what they said they were going to do. So there was no reason in the universe for me to think that that wasn't going to come through right <laughs> but he had an unexpected thing happen not his fault things, <laughs> and had to cancel that job and um and then the other guy flaked on me which i really think he was just really full of, uh, he was just full of it but <laughs> that's besides the point but had i had the other if, if the 700 hundred dollar one was still there it wouldn't have been a big deal but because they both canceled it became an issue all of a sudden <laughs> A trip that was supposed to like make me money ended up costing me money, but uh, it is what it is. But I reached out. <laughs> I reached out while I reached out on Twitter, and I touched base with a bunch of people that shoot content. And I ended up getting a bunch of content while I was there. And I um, met up with a photographer too, and did a photo shoot while I was there. So I got a lot of stuff to bring back with me. So I mean, it was it was worth the trip. It just wasn't exactly what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Um... Because it, see, that's one thing that like a lot of dudes worry about too. And also, when you travel, 
is people faking. Because that's one thing yeah. that I don't miss from the game. I still I still have it happen here in podcasting. You know, but it's it's like it's not it's like you book like I never forget 2019 when 2019 when I went to Exotica. I had seven shoots booked and I only walked away with two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, it definitely so it's happens. Like, it's frustrating. Because I would never do that to someone unless like my kid was deathly ill or something like totally out of the box. But like I would never cancel like that. So it's like <laughs> it's frustrating to me because like I had plane tickets and you know already and I <laughs> I had already booked my nurse to watch my son and you know so it's frustrating but it happens which is why it's good to have a following like and to be active on things like Twitter because then you can throw it out there and say hey my job got canceled I'm going to be in New York who wants to shoot and people you know and then, yeah, and then too, right also, you also TTS tested so they can go look and see. She clean. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with, with looking back on your first year, um, what do you think of it so far? I love it. I love the business. I've always been very sexual. But in the confines of, like, a marriage and a monogamous relationship, so I never really dabbled in this world, you know? Yeah. So I I love it because I, I didn't realize how many people there were that, like, thought like me. I just thought I was a weirdo. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but, see, but see, that's the beauty but, of, of porn is that you can be as nasty as you want, as a freak as you want, and there's no judgment because that's the purpose of why you're there. Yeah, exactly. And you find like-minded people. And, like, I've made a lot of really good friends in the business, too. Like, beyond just shooting with them and, like, a bus- on a business standpoint, I've made friends, you know, because you find people that, that think along the same lines as you. And, and it's nice. And it's nice to be in a world where there's less judgment, you know, about so, sexuality. So, of course, you have been in the orgy. Um, I take it you've probably done a threesome, a male, male, female threesome, correct? As well as yeah, a, I remember I said that was my first yeah. page shoot was a was a threesome yeah yeah and um, now are you looking to do a gangbang? I would love to do that. I just haven't had the opportunity yet. Oh my goodness! And, and so, <laughs> so so for for your perfect gang, <laughs> for your perfect gangbang, how many dudes? I don't know. I mean, I would say like around ten is a good number. You know, any more than that is a little bit. <laughs> That let you know she loves gay bang. She's one. doing double figures. Oh my <laughs> goodness! So shoot. So um, with that, do you do anal? I do. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No doubt. Yeah, because I was. I, I always say it's the year of anal because a lot of females are now starting to do more anal in, in their content. You know? Yeah. Um, no. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like my favorite thing in the universe, like you know, in my free time, but it sells. So, so yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> so, no, so is, is it something that you enjoy, or is just? Um, I depends on the person. I mean, like you know, if it, you if in order to enjoy that, you have to have someone that's like works themselves up to it, and you know knows what they're yeah. doing. So, so it depends. I mean, I do sometimes, but it just sort of depends on the person. Yeah, because um, because even when we do shoots, we have to have mental prep as well as physical prep. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's some of the mental prep and, and and stuff that you do when you know you have a shoot coming up to get ready for? It? Um, well, I mean, I just try and like remember that it's this is it's fun and not to take anything that a guy says to be too seriously, especially when you're doing some of the more hardcore stuff and the guys are <laughs> getting mm-hmm. nasty and saying you know crap to you and. It's just part of the business and, you know, you just have to, you just have to go into it with a good attitude and like not let yourself get caught up in anything. Um, But as long as like, I'm fine with, with pretty much anything sexually, as long as like afterwards the guy is carried, you know, like those are some aftercare. (laughs) I could do do the freaky stuff as long as like afterwards you, you're, you're nice and like, you know, you do the aftercare, you remind me that you don't actually think I'm, you know, like a you know, horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Come over so, there, give you a hug, rub the booty. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so. Make you feel good. Yeah, because 
because we have to play a role when we get in front of the right. camera all the time. You know, period. Right. It may it, it just depends upon what the the producer might want, or even to what you might need. You know, period. Right. Um, because within your own content, how do you come up with the ideas for your scenes? Um, some of it has to do with who you're shooting with and what they're comfortable with, obviously, you know, and how hardcore they want to get. But, um, but it's, it's a creative process. It's, you know, talking to the other person and shooting ideas around until you land on something that you think will work for both of your brands. Yeah, because, um, because the thing about with, 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 with me, like I used to do a whole bunch of role play scenes because Mm -hmm. to me, I've always felt that the fans, wanted a story or what have you. Then eventually I started drifting into, you know, BDSM or what have you. So, um, are you wanting to into BDSM? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done a little bit of everything, so. Oh, I'm, I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 listen, I, uh, I'm one of those people that does not say no to much. <laughs> so, and I honestly, like, like say it wasn't a job and, like, we were just having fun or whatever. Like, I honestly get off on the guy getting off. So, like, mm-hmm. the guy on. Because I just like. Hello? Hello? Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hello, okay hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I told you. Damn it, stop it. Now go ahead and say what you're saying. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. I, I was just saying, like, you know, like, I, whatever whatever pleases the guy pleases me. And, like, I, I get into it more when the guy's into it. So I'm a little bit more submissive in that sense that, like, I kind of go along with whatever the guy is feeling. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can tell you a pleaser from, from, from your BJ because yeah. I, I, I see you enjoy <laughs> giving in. <laughs> yeah, it, no. it might have push you away. God dang it. You, you, <laughs> might, you might lose during the scene. I just be, <laughs> Baby, we, we got to save some for the rest of the scene. Damn. <laughs> I have a bad habit of starting before the scene actually starts, too. I there's there's one on my many vids that you'll see um where where the cameraman comes up like two minutes like into like well he's filming it but like he like was filming from far away and then comes up and he's like, damn, you started before I even got my camera ready. <laughs> like, you hear him say you hear him say that at the beginning of the scene. <laughs> so I have I have a bad habit of doing that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, but see, to me, I, I I like shit like that because that means that she's ready to roll. She's yeah. she's ready. You know what I'm saying? And which you turn the energy transfer to the male talent. Yeah. Because because I'm I'm a proponent of energy. How you walk into the room, how you are during the scene, what have you. And a lot of times, women do set the standard for the for the energy. We just gotta make sure we don't fuck it up as dudes. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so what's some of the things that a dude can do to help? A lady relax on set when it comes time for a shoot. Um, I think that really depends on the girl. I mean, everybody's a little bit different as to what helps them get into the zone and you know helps them. I mean, if I like it when a guy is like a little bit touchy feely, like before the scene starts and starts to like yeah. you know give you a little bit of a shoulder massage, start to get a little intimate with me before the cameras are on to where like I feel like he wants to be there, <laughs> you know, and it's not just a job. And then I can get a little bit more out of my head and into the moment more. Yeah, yeah. Because because to me, it's I, I tell dudes, you still have to woo the lady. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, because just like she got to woo you a little bit, you got to woo her. It's not wooing her to fuck her off camera. It's wooing her so that it, it's, it's, it, it's the energy of I want you I, and, and she wants me, which in turn yeah. they will feel on, on the camera. Exactly, because like, you know, even though, yes, it's a job, yes, we may not have fucked if we weren't, you know, here for a job, you still want to feel like the guy wants to fuck you, and it's not like yeah. he's just there because he has to, you know? Because <laughs> like, yeah. you're going to be like, well, damn. Right, then you get in your head, and then it's not going to be good, <laughs> so. Yeah, because so, yeah. people realize how much of a mental game this is. It totally is. And I think it's the same thing for a guy. Like, if a girl walks on a scene and you can just tell she's totally not into the guy, it's like, you gotta yeah. act like, you, you, even if you're acting, you gotta act like you want each other for a minute. 
<laughs> you know? I'm saying because 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 you won't him because let's be honest, especially on the paid gig, y'all don't get paid unless you not. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, don't so stand there look at him like, no. oh, I wouldn't fuck that. You know, like you know, make him feel good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so, so, shoot. so, do you do role play scenes? Um, a little bit. I honestly, I find that I, I'm more than happy to do it. It's not everybody is cool with doing it though. Like some people are weird yeah. about the whole like script thing or like you know, loose script. I mean, not like a script script, yeah. but you know, like loose script ideas. Like some people are weird about that. I'm actually doing a paid job right now. Um, it's like a repeat paid job that is heavy into scripts. You know, like loose scripts. Like I said, like here's the idea and you ad lib. Well, it's fun. You know, it's fun because you're acting. Yeah. It's, play a role it's fine um it's kind of funny though because they have me playing the daughter <laughs> and my mo- and my mom in the scene is actually five years younger than me oh god <laughs> <laughs> Wait a so you look younger than the mom <laughs> uh, i guess or she's a very dominant person yeah that's why they but yeah it's kind of funny <laughs> yeah because because I think well one because a lot of these guys is coming in now they thanks to OnlyFans and all that shit they think they don't understand the pertinence of role play mm. um, and thanks to reality porn things that was taboo that you saw that was a rarity that used to make a shitload of money now it, it doesn't like public sex right. Everyone got one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and nobody nobody's you know, impressed man. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even to the point that when porn is heading to a little bit more extreme to where you you seeing more BDSM, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff of that nature. And um, do you think because you being open minded as you are and into that, do you you think that helps with you getting more bookings? Yeah. Because it seems like porn is sure. heading to that direction. For sure, because I don't say no to things like you know, because people will say like, "Hey, I might be interested in booking you. Are what are you open to? What are your, you know, hard no's? What are you?" And if you have a list of hard no's a mile long, they're gonna go with someone that's more open. (laughs) Obviously, (laughs) you know, like so. And and I almost, I mean, like besides like the crazy, crazy stuff. Obviously, there's certain things I wouldn't do, like, (laughs) but like you know, but it has to be really out there, you know. Like I wouldn't do underage. I won't do. I won't. Don't draw blood. You know, stuff like that. But like, yeah. But beyond like that crazy stuff, like, (laughs) like I really don't say no. So, like, I actually liked a little bit of BDSM. Like a little bit of pain juxtaposed with pleasure makes the pleasure more intense. Oh yeah, because because even to me, like I enjoy when I did my BDSM scenes. Oh my god, I loved them <laughs> because because one, I'm a dom in in my in my in my personal life, mm-hmm. so it was right down the alleyway, and they sold, you know. Period. Yeah. And and also with that, you got to have a certain type trust that has oh, to be yeah, built. You know, period. So, because it's to the point that, like, when you do content, it kills me when, like, dudes, it, this will kill me. When dudes is trying to, let's say, establish comfortability and trust, it's like f- female, it like, the thing that you talked about is you like to get to know the time you're about to shoot with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When does the dude draw the line? When, when is the line crossed when he's being too thirsty? That's the question oh. I get to. Um, well, I I don't know. I have I think it's because like I do come off as a little sweet and innocent and like like I don't maybe not in like the stereotypical porn girl, but like I get a lot of a lot of guys I work with asking me out, which is you know annoying. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you do, actually. So, look, at, look at your videos, I'm, I'm not surprised. So, yeah, it gets annoying after a while because, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, you know, you, you, were, you, you don't even head, like, like, that's like, you don't want to actually date me, you just want to... Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to marry you for that head. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
Well, I, I, yeah, I, mean, that, that, I guess that's my claim. <laughs> I think that's my claim to fame because uh, I, I, I think every job I've ever had, like after we, after we've had like a big like group scene or something, people like half the people come with me and go, "Damn, you're good at oral, or you, your oral skills are on point." Or girls too, girls say it to me too. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness, she can eat pussy and suck a dick. Well, I mean, yep. I already heard that a woman eat pussy and suck dick, so. I mean, there you go. She's living proof of that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's not, I thought oh that different. It was funny, like, the very first time I did the threesome with the paid shoot, I really had very, like, I always considered myself I because I always thought women were beautiful and I was always attracted to them, but I had never really experimented because I was always in a committed relationship, right? with a guy (laughs) and so I'd never really done much I'd kissed a girl but that was about the extent of it right so Mm -hmm. so when I went to that threesome I'm like I got thrown into a paid shoot and I knew I had to perform like I had never eaten pussy before like I had (laughs) never and so I did it for the first time on camera and afterwards he's like I usually don't like that from a girl but you're good and I start laughing (laughs) like I had no idea what I was doing (laughs) They probably looked at you funny as hell to me. That ain't your first time, girl. Ain't your first time. Like, I had no idea what I was doing. Practiced. You practiced on your wrist or something. I just, I just attacked it like I would attack a penis. Like, I, just, I, I mean, because, I mean, it's, it, it, it's like, it, how can I put this? It's just imagination. Because you, it's the clay, it's the, the, the lips. And I'm a girl, you know so I know what feels good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know how you want your pussy ate, so you're going to exactly. eat it like you want your shit ate. Exactly. <laughs> so it wasn't that hard. <laughs> yeah, so because, um, damn, I forgot what the hell that came <laughs> off of. See, that's that why I love we go off on tangents, because they'd be so good, I forgot what we were talking about prior to the tangent <laughs> that we just went off on. Let's show you this is a good podcast right there. Yeah. No, but, no, but what I'm saying, no, but, but no, but, but back to, because that was the thing with me. With that, I, I like think you were asking what, when it was drawing the line with the guy, yeah, what, yeah, what, what we were talking me, about. <laughs> yeah, because to me, it's like, like one time, I supposed to be doing a, uh, it was a paid shoot. And I hit the lady up, like, yo, just want to make sure we still good. It's been, like, almost two weeks since I hit her, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you doing too much? Oh, you hit me up this and third. I'm like, okay, one, I want to make sure we still doing the shoot so I know if I can replace you, I can in that time slot. Two, yeah. also, I like to get to know you because I'm also the male time can be fucking your ass on camera. Three. <laughs> The other reason I like to get to know you because I want to know if uh, if I can actually trust to fuck you raw off a of camera, even though you're coming <laughs> with a fucking test. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, because... you, don't know. you don't know. Someone went to a swinger club the night before. They have a test that's still valid, but they fuck 10 people, you know, without a condo. <laughs> like, I'm saying. I- I'm saying. And see, that's <laughs> what people don't realize when it comes to why you do get to know. You have those conversations with your talent, yeah. especially on content, because you're also trying to find out can I trust this motherfucker to be clean walking in the door? Can I trust the test? Because the test only is good the last person you fucked. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, like, that's why I don't like usually, I don't usually do something with someone unless I've talked to them for a while. You know, I've like, gotten to know yeah. them a little bit to where I feel comfortable with them, unless it's obviously a paid shoot and someone throws me into doing things because I get paid for it. But like, but as far as like content is concerned, I try to get to know the person first. So, be it that you're, you're single or what have you, mm-hmm. um, because of course we hear the misconception: women can't, men, women in this business can't find love, don't have jobs, all that bullshit. You, you know, you know the bullshit they say, or what yeah. have you. Um, be it that you being single, how do you handle the conversation of what you do? Um, honestly, I really haven't had to go there very much yet because I'm still new and I, um, I have friends, with, I have friends with benefits. So it's like, they're not like completely like single. <laughs> like, I, I guess I'm not in a committed relationship, you know, so, but I have friends. I mean, I, I mean, it's okay to try the dick and you ain't got to buy it. <laughs> exactly. You try the car, you ain't buying the motherfucker, so why can't you try the dick? I'm just saying. Yeah. So I mean, I, like I said, I was I I 
was married very young and then I jumped from that marriage right into another marriage and um I'm not trying to do that <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to just have fun <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, you also chasing this career, so it's yeah. kind of like it's gonna take up your time, and you also a single mother. Yeah. So it's a lot that. I've lost a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And but even more so than that, um, now that you're a porn star, dudes also got to bring it in the bedroom because. Oh yeah. You don't do vanilla sex. Because I know what good sex is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to like be a lazy lover and just like expect. Yeah. Yeah, I know now, now, now I know the dick for you. Got that. It, it, it got to be stellar. Uh, it, it, it can't just it just bring the regular fuck no damn. More. <laughs> and that's a lot of pressure out of this piece. Out of this piece. So, and how much do you think about that? A little. <laughs> A little. I mean, I and I also think about the fact that obviously I would I would like to meet somebody and like you know have a father figure for my child. Obviously, everybody wants that to some degree. But um, but I think about it, but like how I would you know tell them what I do and because obviously I'd have to have a somewhat open relationship, with the, you know, in order to be able to keep working. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, because because it because like I said, one they usually that's the reason why a lot of times they they they, they in the industry or they date a swinger. Yeah, because well, that's, that's kind of what I think is what I have to do. Yeah, because I don't think most like guys that aren't in the lifestyle of either the industry or swingers are like going to be okay with it long term. They might say they're okay with yeah. it because they like the idea that your reports are, but then when push comes mm. to shove, they're going to get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, until they start seeing your videos and all them big ass dicks got to you. Yeah. Like, Jesus, I, I, I'm not packing like that. Yeah. So, you don't make sounds like that. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I, mean, I kind of been trying to think. I don't kind of explore that world because I think maybe that mm. would be like the best fit for me. You know, like, we're like. I could like put all of my love into one person, but sexually still be a little bit more explorative. So, well, I mean, me, I go off of monogamy is mental, not necessarily physical. Yeah, I um, agree with that, but not all guys agree with yeah, that. I so. mean, it, it, but like I said, it's how can I put this? A lot of times, because we are taught as a society not to share our mate, mm -hmm. you know, period. So it's kind of like. And then, two also dudes, we talking about dick here. And, yeah. okay, they say that bullshit about the energy and all that. Okay, I get that. But it's it's more so, this is what it is with a dude. He has a bigger dick, and he's going to do things to her that you may not be able to do. <laughs> so you can <laughs> think they handle that shit and come behind it. You know what I mean? <laughs> And, and that's why I said, no, nah, it has to be a dude that's even into it. He don't mind you. Or, like, there's one couple I talked to where basically the only way she fucks off outside of a relationship is if, yeah, she's going to do porn. You know, right. Yeah, well, that, which is what I would probably, if I were to be in a serious relationship, that would probably be the deal. Like, if I'm shooting content or, or getting paid, then it's okay. But, like, no having sex off camera type of thing. Yeah. Yes, but it, I mean, has, it more, has to be ruled. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's not a relationship. Like it just yeah. went to <laughs> but it... yeah, because but but to be honest with you, it's kind of like even with porn, it it, it like kills me when people get their feelings on a set because yeah. you're there for business, and the only reason why you were there, he, one, you dare to fuck her because you're being paid for it, or you're trying to get content to make money off of it. Right. Plus, you're already guaranteed to fuck it because you're there. So mm -hmm. what's the point? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> take, take out the eating shit. <laughs> you single for real. <laughs> Go out Although, like I said, I have plenty of the guys ask me to take me out to eat afterwards so they can get some more sex. <laughs> so. I, I'm pretty sure of it. I'm pretty darn sure of it. Shoot. Because I mean, no, I I I, I like I like people laugh at me when I say it, but I said, no, a lot of these dudes they, this is the only way they get sex. Because yeah, part well, there's of it, definitely guys like that in the industry. That they're in the industry because they wouldn't be able to get laid otherwise. Yeah, but see, the reason why, the only reason how they, 
Yeah, but see, the thing is, the only reason why this is the only way they get sex is because we have to to cur our sex life so heavy to even do this fucking business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you just can't. If you're sitting here talking about TTS test, I will say it again. That's three hundred fucking dollars per. T that's per test, motherfuckers, and that depends. And that and that's just in my area. It's cheaper yeah. if you go to Vegas, what have you. So you're talking about doing that, what, twice a month? Yeah. And then you want to go out there in the bar and go fuck this random chick. <laughs> you're not going you to. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not going to risk your career off of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you damn near got to have your girlfriend TTS tested almost. It's almost that serious. Yeah. Baby, I, look, baby, you need to get TTS tested. <laughs> no, no, you can't do the doctor. No health department. No, we need TTS <laughs> I need the world to see that you clean too, goddamn it. <laughs> she be saying to, women be saying to their husband, baby, I need you to do TTS, baby. <laughs> I can't do the doctor. No, no TTS. I need everybody to know. Cause they think you're a cheating piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, they know we swing and all that good stuff. You know, so you know, no, no. You need to do the TTS too. So the world can see you clean. Yeah. <clears throat> Because yeah, that was right. the biggest thing. Yeah, that was the biggest thing for me because I was used to just going out willy nilly. But when I got in the game, I couldn't do that anymore. Yeah, you're not gonna risk like losing your livelihood because you catch something from some one night stand that's stupid. Yeah, and you're just feeling stupid because even if it's something that you catch and get rid of, they will shame the fuck out of your ass. Which I hate people do that because yeah. shit happens. You feel me? And yeah, as long as and it might not necessarily be your fault. It may be somebody that like had a test, and you thought they were clean, but they went out the night before, or fuck someone. Like, that's not your fault. Like, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then now you got to sit here and convince everybody, I'm a clean person. Like, it happens one time. What the fuck? Okay. You know, you shouldn't be shut off from shooting with people because it, it, it's, if it's something that you can stick a needle in your ass and it's done in seven days, what the fuck? It happens. Yeah. But that's just the way of the world. They want to shun people just for the fuck up sometimes. Sort of how it is these days. <laughs> Everybody gets canceled over the littlest thing. Oh my God. <laughs> Can't believe you did this. But then, but no, what's funny? If it happens to them, they want grace. Oh, of course, yeah. But they don't give grace, and 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 it shouldn't be that way. Like that, like person, like every you know, like I don't hold shit against people, and like. You don't like lie to me, like hurt my family. I'm good. <laughs> like, yeah, basically, basically, and like I can work through anything. Most definitely. So, Miss Lady, I have held you for an hour, and I have enjoyed you. And like I told you before, I would like to bring you back to later episodes. Yeah, if you're down for that. You. Yeah, of course. So I got to ask you the question that I ask every co-host, whether they're male or female, mineral or vegetable, it doesn't matter. Can I call you a smoke buddy? You certainly can. No doubt, no doubt. You're a smoke buddy whether you smoke or not, so it don't matter. <laughs> That's right. No so, you, so you'll be hearing more of an sexy lady, and um, especially I'm going to bring it to the premium smoke room for my subscribers to enjoy her. And Miss Lady, the premium smoke room, we get a little bit more nastier, a little bit more raunchier, a little bit more candid, and way more open in there. It's four ninety nine dollars a month, six premium podcasts for you to enjoy weekly. So go ahead and subscribe and get that. It's spending about spending money. Tell everybody where they can spend money on you, Miss Crimson. Um, well, if you go to my Twitter, all of my links are on there, but, um, I have a many vids and all of that, but yeah, just go to my Twitter, which is at Natalia, um, Crimson. No doubt, no doubt. And if you're going to the XBs, go check her out. Give yeah. her a hug. Say that I sent her. <laughs> Definitely. And put a hundred dollar bill, and put, and put a hundred dollar bill in her phone. Yep. Hey, I'll take it. I'll, I'll even I'll even flash you to pull the pants down, let you let you put them in the song. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So with that being said, life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience if you didn't learn anything? Smoke this over. Thank you for coming to the lounge, man. All right, bye. Hey, how you doing? Let me tell you about a great deal. 
why don't you come on over to the premium smoke room? There ain't no smoke like premium smoke. I'm talking about four premium podcasts. I'm talking about Miss Big Queen and the Porn Rap Star. I'm talking about Pilgrim on Wrestling. I'm talking about Causing Havoc with Princess Havoc, as well as the Marie Daily Report. Oh, I'm sorry. Five, STO Dark. Plus also extra premium episodes for some of the hottest ladies and gents in the business of porn. And all this for four ninety nine a month. I'm talking about five to six extra episodes a week on top of the free shit that you get. So do the math. Great deal. Only on Spotify, only on Anchor. Come check me out. Come catch this premium smoke.